Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it personally, and then I'd be able to send my best watches to your inbox on a daily basis. If you like our watches, check out thewatchbox.com where this watch and its 1,700 friends are for sale 24 hours a day. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on thewatchbox.com. And today, we discuss a vintage Omega Flightmaster. This is the reference 145013. The Flightmaster debuted as something approaching the ultimate pilot's watch possible with 1969 technology, and that's when it launched. The model is big, broad, and born of the 60s, but iconic of the 70s in its shape and stance. It's a big watch, and functionally so, with many features friendly to the late 60s aviator, as well as instant legibility thanks to the size and scope of its dial and bezel. Let's talk about how it fits. Now, it's 52.5 millimeters lug to lug, which is big, but in this rather dramatically shaped cushion case, and I think it's best described as a sort of exaggerated tonneau. It spreads its mass nicely on the wrist, 43.5 millimeters wide, that does not include the five individual crowns. It's a thick thing at 15.5 millimeters thick, but then again, oversized watches in the modern era have redefined what thick means, Rolex Deep Sea. So I'm not going to hold 15.5 against this watch with its sloped flank. You might actually fit this underneath some dress cuffs in spite of its girth. Now the watch wears comfortably because the case back shape is regular. The lugs are essentially non-existent, and the bizarre Imperial Stormtrooper-like helmet profile actually wraps around the wrist quite well. Now, the timepiece is equipped with a original Omega bracelet. It's a 1159 with 155 end pieces, so just to verify everything right here, you can see the bracelet is in excellent condition with the original vintage-style Omega logo blazon on the inside. You can see that all of the original maker's marks as well as references are fully intact, and everything about this watch is best described thusly, fully intact. There's really not excessive stretch in the bracelet. For something that is approaching 50 years old, it's an outstanding wearable and highly functional condition. The case itself, and we can get, we can get close since the watch is off the wrist, but the case itself is one of the best I've seen. First, all of the lines are razor sharp. You'll also note that the radial satin grain is completely intact. Sure, there are some marks that indicate the watch was physically handled by a human being at some point in the last half century, but you can't add metal back. And as you can see, all of the original metal is here. The finish is incredible, and you'll note the cleft of the case band where the vertical portion meets the lug end. Just look how sharp that junction is. For that matter, look at the bevel at the lug end. Even the satin grain at the tip is completely intact. You'll note that all of the original color-coded crowns are not just present and correct, but they're in superb condition with the colors themselves intact and inset. Also, consider the quality of the bezel itself. It's as though it's never been nicked, and the original mineral crystal is present without a scratch or a scuff. The dial itself is immaculate, original tritium, everything evenly aged, as you can see, hands as well as dial base. There's no tarnishing, there's none of the water damage or degradation that vintage dealers try to pass off as patina. These watches look best in original condition, not patinaed. Thank you very much. I'll take mine like this. Now, of course, there is a trick to operating this watch, and the trick is knowing how to operate this watch. Fortunately, Omega made things easy. Uh, before I do jump into what's inside the dial and inside the case, I should focus on what's on the back of the case. Talking of condition is pointless unless you show the shallowest etching on the case, fully intact, legible. You can even identify the aircraft itself as a Douglas DC-8. That is condition for you, original condition. The timepiece features a comprehensive dial, so let's take a tour of this dial and its multiple hands and gauges. Okay, first things first, bi-directional rotating internal bezel aviator style. The watch was originally water resistant to 6 ATM and it has a unique flush fit, specially seated and sealed crystal, but these watches are getting too old to test at the upper limits of their performance envelope. I recommend you not experience explosive decompression in this watch or 60 meters of water. The timepiece features inboard of that bezel, three registers, chronograph seconds, 
chronograph minutes, chronograph hours up to 12, and then there's a 24 hour indicator that is keyed to the local hour hand at center. So that 24 hour indicator lets you see whether, for example, we're looking at 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. And as you can see clearly, we're approaching 2 a.m. because of the a.m. p.m. indicator. Now you see there's a little blue coated crown that appropriately enough controls the 12th hour blue second time zone. Back when the Rolex GMT Master forced you to offset and do mental math with a bezel, Omega gave you a simple independent second time zone, Advantage Omega. Now in terms of the chronograph, this is as easy as pie. As you can see, orange pushers, orange hands. Start, stop, and reset, just like that. And this one is remarkably crisp. Now what's in the case also matters. It is an Omega Caliber 910, which is a highly modified Caliber 861. So you remember the Moonwatch Caliber, the lateral clutch cam operated 861. We'll add the second time zone, the 24 hour indicator, sheath it in an enormous case, and you get the 910. Now later on, there would be two other versions of this watch, not the gold one, I'm gonna count the two in steel. One was the 145026, and one was the 145036, and those featured running seconds at nine o'clock. Note the watch does not have any kind of constant motion. It's a dead dial, like a Tech Fleep 5980, unless you start the chronograph. So later versions did away with the 24 hour indicator. I prefer the original version here. The movement is manual wind, 21,600 vibrations per hour, 17 joules, as stated, lateral clutch with a cam chronograph system to be tank tough. It also features a 48 hour power reserve. And I have to say it actually has a pleasant winding action. It's a pleasure to energize this watch, preferably same time every day most likely when you get up and you walk to your day, your day stand, your dresser, uh, the table where you keep your watch, you're gonna enjoy winding this one. Feels good and it sounds good. This is a wonderful survivor and an iconic reference. The Flightmaster was one of the ultimate pilot's watches of its era and immensely influential in form as well as function. Produced only for a few years, rare in all variants. This is the way to get into complicated vintage watches. Whenever buying vintage, remember, condition, provenance, originality, and everything else. You can see this one and make it yours on the watch box.